look-wise, were so there that I'm scared. What is that? What is this? I feel like it's best if people don't see how this is made <laughs> at this point. Let's just keep it to the end result. Gordon Ramsay just lost his job. <laughs> There's a new chef in town. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Merle, and like so many of you, I've picked up quite a thing or two from the famous chefs we see on TV. If there's one thing I've noticed in culinary entertainment, it's that vegan food and vegan chefs tend to be highlighted significantly less. And it is for that reason that I am going to veganize a signature dish of one of, if not the most, notorious celebrity chefs. And that is... Gordon Ramsay! Gordon Ramsay is known for his fiery personality and his love of swearing. He's also a Scorpio. I don't know anything about horoscopes, I just think that's a fun detail. He has accrued 16 Michelin stars and currently holds seven. For those of you who don't know what that means, it's a big deal, okay? It's a very big deal. Today, we are going to veganize this entertainment and culinary mogul's signature dish, Beef Wellington! The Beef Wellington is comprised of a juicy beef tenderloin that is then wrapped in a salty meat such as prosciutto or parma ham in Gordon Ramsay's case. And then it has another layer of a mushroom duxelle. And finally, it is snugly blanketed within a buttery puff pastry. Let's get into veganizing this dish. My plan of attack for this dish is going to be inspired by a one crossroads kitchen where they have an eggplant wellington. So here's our beautiful eggplant. Our first step is going to be to trim the top and the bottom and then we're gonna just peel it using this nice sharp knife we've got here. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we are going to take our eggplant and we're going to add it to a plastic bag or a reusable bag if you have one. I should have one to set a good example, but I forgot mine, so. Shake it off. Eggplant is 92% water, so we need to draw a lot of that moisture out, is what I'm saying. Add our salt in. Make sure this is truly <laughs> sealed before you go about shaking it. Great. Now that we have fully coated our eggplant, we're gonna set it aside and we're gonna let the salt drain some of that moisture out for about an hour. I put my hair up because I realized it's more sanitary. So if you're shocked or you don't recognize me, it's still me, Merle. Our next step is to make the sort of marinade that we're gonna be injecting, yes, I said it, injecting our eggplant with. So we're gonna start with some water, coriander, cumin, miso paste, some black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, some paprika, smoked paprika, lemon juice, and salt. And lastly, we're gonna add some beets that we've got cubed up and some carrots for sweetness. Before I blend this up, Gordon Ramsay's whole take on beef tenderloin is that he adds Parma ham. So the smoked paprika is gonna add a little bit of the smoky dried meat flavor that we're missing from prosciutto or Parma ham. Now we're gonna strain our mixture. <laughs> it looks pretty gnarly. We're gonna set this aside because this will come in handy in a moment. Listen, I don't feel good about this next step. I'm a sex positive person, okay? Let's get that one thing straight. But what I'm about to do to this eggplant, children, avert your eyes. If you can see, some of the water's already come out of its on its own, like, see? But we've gotta do the rest manually. I mean, there's just, there's no way around how phallic this is about to be. And like, of course it's an eggplant. The, the, the global symbol of a phallus we're gonna squeeze the water out of this eggplant and we're gonna squeeze it until it reduces in size by half. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I can't. Oh God, it's natural. It's okay. Everyone, can you tell how comfortable I am right now? Suddenly very aware of how many people are in this room with me. The purpose of this is not just to humiliate me, it's actually going to completely change the texture of this eggplant. This is now firm. <laughs> it feels similar to kind of tenderized meat. <laughs> oh my God. Why is everything I say horrible? <sighs> so this is the part where we actually get to play scientist because we're gonna inject the marinade directly into the eggplant and we're gonna transform it from an average everyday eggplant into something resembling meat. As if you thought this recipe couldn't get any weirder. So the key to this is going to be to try to evenly distribute 
are marinated throughout the eggplant. I feel like it's best if people don't see how this is made <laughs> at this point. Let's just keep it to the end result, you know what I mean? They don't need to see the things I go through to get it on their plate. It looks like a bloody mess, and that's what we want from our meat, right? Our prodigy eggplant. In this bowl, I've got some garlic powder, salt, and pepper, and I'm just going to sprinkle it evenly over our eggplant before we toss it in the oven. Now we're gonna bake our eggplant at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 200 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. So while our eggplant is baking, we're going to make a duck cell. We're gonna start by melting some vegan butter, cremini mushrooms, some shiitake mushrooms, and just to prove how fancy this is, some shallot. Now we're gonna stir this up and we're gonna cook these over the medium high heat for about four to five minutes until we've noticed that the mushrooms have released most of the liquid. We're gonna add in garlic, some olive oil, some salt, pepper, some dry vermouth. You can also use sherry or even white wine and thyme. We are gonna cook these for about eight to 10 minutes until the rest of the liquid has pretty much evaporated and the mushrooms are a nice amber brown. Now we're just going to blend up our duck cell in a food processor. And now we've got our eggplant. Remember the eggplant? And we're gonna start off by brushing it with some mustard. The mustard will add a little bit of heat and a little bit of spice. Now it's time for us to work with our puff pastry. So we wanna leave some to hang over on the side here. And then we're just going to cut right down the line. We're going to spread our duck cell about three quarters of the way up our puff pastry. Plop our eggplant on there and roll her up. We're gonna to mix together some water, soy sauce, and flour. Mix that up. And we're just going to paint our puff pastry, and then we're gonna just go over it one more time with some olive oil, which will just help to crisp it up and give it a nice little shine. The last thing we're going to do is cut three diagonal slits into the top of our pastry, and we are going to bake it for 25 more minutes. So while our beef wellington is baking, we're going to make our savory sauce, which we will use to serve our delicious meal with. We are going to add some water, red wine, some some soy sauce, and some concentrated vegetable paste. Finally, I'm gonna add a sprig of thyme. And in the meantime, we're going to mix together a little cornstarch slurry, which consists of cornstarch and water. Beautiful. You'll know that your sauce is done when it can easily coat the back of a spoon. All right, check it out. It's all baked up. It's looking pretty meaty, I'm not gonna lie. This end in particular, this rump on the end here, really, it really is, uh, I was gonna say familiar, but I feel like that's just a weird sentence, so we'll skip over that. So let's carve her up, shall we? Like, this is fascinating to me. It looks like smoked ham, honestly. It's very tough, kind of like meat would be. I mean, it looks unbelievable. Yes, I know there are some seeds in there, and, you know, it's not completely perfect, but it's pretty darn close, if I do say so myself. My brain is like trying to connect dots that don't exist. There are a lot of flavors going on. Like we've got the puff pastry, we've got the duck cell, we've got this savory sauce, we've got the eggplant meat. The experience of actually cutting into the eggplant is kind of wild. Because normally eggplant, like I said, is like light and spongy, but this is like dense and more meaty. I don't think in a million years that anyone is going to be fooled by this. Let's get some people in here and scare the life out of them. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Wow. 
<laughs> okay. Is this like vegan beef Wellington? Yes. <gasps> Check me out. I'm proud of myself. You should be. I'm getting a hunk of meat vibes. <laughs> it looks like steak wrapped in croissant bread, but also maybe like an apple pie of some sort and just dropped in barbecue sauce. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little smell. Wafting method, excuse me. It doesn't smell bad. That's good. It's squishy. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> what is that? Oh, uh, okay. I mean, look at that cut. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. I don't even want to guess what that is. I just want to taste it. Okay, I'm gonna get a smaller piece because I'm worried. Oh, be that is a hefty bite, but I, I've cut it and I have to go for it. Okay. Are we getting eggplant vibes? Oh my Are we god, getting yes. eggplant vibes? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh my god. You're a savant. <gasps> is that a watermelon? I don't know. Is it a squash? <laughs> I don't understand the flavor there. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Horrible? No. Oh my god. Gordon Ramsay just lost his job. <laughs> there was a new chef in town. I feel like the sauce definitely makes it more beef vibes. I'm still getting a little of the crunch of a eggplant as opposed to a beef. Copy. But like, what can you do? Not much. Now, the meat, the beef of the Wellington is um, where the concern comes in a bit for me. There's a lot of texture here, yeah? The outside of it is squishy, but the inside of it is mushy. It's harder to get that like beefy texture. Totally. But with what we're working with, hot damn. I'm actually kind of digging this a little bit. It takes some getting used to. Flavor-wise, we're there. Look-wise, we're so there that I'm scared. <laughs> uh, it is scary for me to look at this. If I give this to a vegetarian, they go, ah. If I give this to a vegan, they start crying. I would give this one a six. So clearly, I would give it a nine. <laughs> clearly, as I like lick the plate. Four, average. Five, it's average, five out of 10. It's one, it's an acquired taste, in a quiet place. Ah, uh, just the silence. I mean, you made this a quiet place with that silence. <laughs> that was my first eggplant, right here. I just popped my eggplant cherry. Nice. Wow. That sounds good for those. That sounds horrible. That sounds horrible. <laughs> Oh, God. Yay, you can cut. <laughs>